Hey everyone, intuitive and astrologer Lisa Salvatore here to talk to you about the remainder of December. We have a powerful full moon to close out the year on December 26th in the sign of Cancer. We've got Mercury very much still retrograde throughout the end of the year. We have the winter solstice and Capricorn season on deck, and we've also got Jupiter stationing direct at the end of December. So what does all of that mean? We're going to get into it, but first be sure to like, share, and subscribe so that you are notified of uploads as they come out. Subscribe to my newsletter. You can find me there. You can also find all of the handles for my socials linked in the description box below. I have been receiving a lot of emails about gift certificates, so linked in the description box below, you can also find gift certificates. And I'm running a special through December 25th. This is one for me, one for you energy, okay? Do you have someone on your list that you don't know what to buy for? Why not give them the gift of insight? If you purchase two 45-minute sessions, you will receive a half an hour session with me as a thank you. Again, this is only going to be available until December 25th, and I've linked this in the newsletter. Okay, so let's dive right in. December 21st, 1027 p.m. Eastern Time, the sun leaves the sign of Sagittarius and enters the studious, hardworking, practical Earth sign of Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by the planet Saturn, so as soon as we enter Capricorn season, a somewhat serious energy pervades the air, and serious is not bad. It just means that we get more real about what it is that we want, what it is that we're working on, what it is that we're working toward. We can even feel a little bit more responsible. And the entrance of Capricorn season is also the winter solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. The winter solstice is like a rebirth of the sun. It is the longest night of the year and the shortest day of the year. The winter solstice carries with it a very celebratory energy, even though we tend to go dark and we have an increased amount of darkness at this time of year, going forward, we are going to increase in light. And this is something to celebrate. This goes back to ancient times. It's a time to celebrate the energy, the essence, and the radiance of the sun and what it represents and provides for us. The winter solstice is yin energy. It's very receptive. It's also very internal, introspective. This is where we go inward to hibernate, to reflect, and to collect so that when we get to the spring equinox in March, we're ready to rebirth and renew somewhere, somehow, something in our reality. So yes, we might go dark for some months, but this all serves a purpose. As we come upon the winter solstice, think about where you can release, reflect upon where you need to let go to grow, and set intentions for the new season. And when I say the new season, I mean going to the spring equinox. I find it always more beneficial to set intentions in chunks of digestible time because when we go too far ahead, we overwhelm ourselves, put a lot of pressure on ourselves, and there's already enough pressure. So start small, set intentions from the winter solstice until the spring equinox and watch your seeds sprout. And again, happy birthday to all of our Capricorn souls. It is your season. Okay, December 22nd, Mercury, currently retrograding Capricorn, is actually going to have a really nice moment of the retrograde cycle known as Mercury Kazemi. This is where the Sun and Mercury conjunct, they align exact. Spiritually speaking, it's like the properties of Mercury become amplified by the warmth and the energy and the radiance of the Sun. Very powerful times that we are under right now. We've got the winter solstice and now the Mercury Kazemi. This conjunction of the Sun and Mercury happens at zero degrees and 39 minutes of Capricorn. So you're going to want to check your chart to see where Capricorn falls. And if you have anything at that zero degree point of Capricorn, as an aside, you can download your free birth chart right on my website, right on the homepage. So the good thing about the sun Mercury conjunction is that it is a point of the retrograde where we will more than likely receive some clarity about something that we have been lamenting on for quite some time. It may have been confusing for us. This energy has been very confusing. We've been dealing with a lot of Neptunian aspects, Neptune, the god of the seas. Neptune definitely confuses things, muddles things, fogs things up. Yet at the same time, Neptune also clears our vision. So, so it's very interesting. It's like we see things more clearly, but yet at the same time, we feel deceived in some capacity, when in reality, we could be the one deceiving and deluding ourselves in one or more areas of our lives. And this Mercury moment can reveal a blind spot, can bring in an epiphany of sorts. It can happen literally, it can come in by information through another person, through another channel, or it can even happen in the dream space. So pay close attention to what and how information comes through to you between the winter solstice, the 21st, and then the 22nd. Then on the 23rd, Mercury is going to back into Sagittarius. Mercury is already trekked through Sagittarius, okay? Now Mercury is not at the height of its power in the sign of Sagittarius. And Mercury's retrograde, so this just amplifies the fact that Mercury is not in a powerful position right now, and the remainder of the retrograde is going to be messy. 
there's likely going to be travel delays, technology situations, communication situations. So be extra mindful of how you're speaking to others, to yourself, triple check your emails, your documents, because a lot can go awry right now under these energies. And of course, as we know, it is the holidays. Mail gets messed up, packages aren't getting delivered or delayed. Just know that this is the energy. So this is just the 21st through the 24th of December. Now, the main purpose of this video was to talk about the final full moon of 2023, the full moon in Cancer that we have taking place on December 26th, the day after Christmas. It takes place at 7.33 p.m. Eastern time. And I apologize, but I'm not gonna be able to show you the chart today because I'm having a technology issue with my little stream deck here, so I cannot pull up the chart. I apologize for that. But I can tell you that as we are building up towards this full moon, full moons naturally pull up emotion, they pull up energy, they pull everything up to the surface. This is a full moon that takes place in the sign of Cancer. The sun is currently in the opposite sign of Capricorn and a full moon is always oppositional energies, right? Now, this particular full moon can feel much more emotional, but also in the best way possible. I actually like the energy around this full moon. Not necessarily the energy in general, but the energy around this full moon. It falls in the sign of Cancer, like I mentioned, and the moon is very powerful in Cancer because the moon rules Cancer, so it's its natural home. Cancer is a very intuitive and sensitive and nurturing water sign. It's all about family, home, the hearth, its family of choice and family of origin. And what other time than around the holiday season where we are not spending most of it with those people in our lives that are family, literally, or like family. Now, the energy around this full moon can absolutely amplify the emotions, for better or worse. This full moon falls at 4 degrees and 58 minutes of Cancer, so you're going to want to check your chart and see where the sign of Cancer falls. Also, see what you have around 4 degrees of any of the cardinal signs especially, which are Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, or Libra, and think 2 to 6 degrees. Also, if you have anything in Scorpio or Pisces, particularly your sun, your moon, or your rising sign between two and six degrees, you're definitely going to be feeling this full moon energy that much more strongly, meaning that much more, you'll be that much more emotionally activated, again, for better or worse. I do feel like there's a lot of strong feel-good energy, though, around this full moon. I want to say that. I definitely feel that there's a strong energy of connection, connectedness, connectedness to self, maybe, could be the way that it works, if not to others, and or both. Now, since this full moon falls at four degrees, that means that it falls in the first decan of Cancer, which means it's very much Cancerian energy. It's very emotional. It's very watery. It's definitely got themes of home, what feels like home, emotionally, physically, spiritually, right? Because home is not just a physical space. There is a strong focus around relationships at this time, and especially it's especially powerful and potent around this full moon. Now we are in Capricorn season, and again, Capricorn is ruled by the planet Saturn. And as we move throughout the remainder of this month, there, there is a strong focus on chapters that are closing, but then also new chapters getting ready to be written. It's also a time to reflect upon our accomplishments and to recognize the work-play balance. That's Capricorn and Cancer. We have to remember that yes, it's good to work really hard and it's good to have goals and aspirations and it's good to work toward those, but we also have to remember to be there for ourselves, to show up for ourselves and for others, the others in our lives that are really important to us, that we have and value true emotional connection with. And if you're in situations where that is not present, that's also going to be very much amplified and very much obvious, more obvious to you around this full moon. If you aren't feeling fed or nurtured or nourished in one or more relationships in your life, it's going to be that much more evident to you. And likewise, if you're on the other end of that and somebody in your life or other people in your life are not feeling that from you, there could be chapters closing and then new ones beginning. Now we've got the sun in Capricorn in a trine to Jupiter and Taurus, which is lovely. And the moon is also harmonizing with Jupiter. Again, this is really nice. This is expansive, benevolent energy. It's great for socializing. It's great for small talk. And Mercury is lined up with Mars in Sagittarius. So this could bring in, this is the one piece of the full moon that I would be cautious with. The Mercury-Mars conjunction in Sagittarius, that's fire, that's energy, that's blunt force, blunt words. It could be abrasive, it could be abrupt, and sometimes too blunt for its own good. That's the energy. So if you're in the middle of an important conversation with somebody and you spit something out, it could be very hurtful to them. It could be very emotionally jarring. This is an emotional full moon. And we all have our own emotions. We all know emotions can be messy. 
So again, a little bit more mindful with the communication, remembering that Mercury is retrograde, Mercury is conjunct Mars, everyone's feeling it. Positively speaking, we can use that in a very kind manner to speak kind words to others. This full moon is harmonizing with Saturn, which is extremely helpful. Again, Saturn brings a sense of order and structure and organization and a feeling of taking things seriously. And that's really helpful right now. Another thing we have to be mindful of is that we are dealing with this ongoing square to Neptune. Neptune's now direct. And this can bring in an element of paranoia, deceit, and dishonesty, along with some spotty communication, but with a strong emphasis on relationships. And there's a lot of good here too as well. So it could be a little bit of a mixed bag, but it's important to remember with Neptune, there's a beautiful side. There's a high vibrational side, which is all about compassion and altruism and doing things for other people, sacrificing something of ourselves to give to another. And again, it's the holiday season. So that's going to be a theme. And also with the square to Neptune, I have to mention, Neptune also rules over alcohol. So we wanna watch the potential to overdo it in any capacity with substances, also with our fears because Neptune can bring up fears as well. Strong themes of abandonment or fear of abandonment could be surfacing for some under these energies, especially when it comes to family dynamics. So if you are uncomfortable and you don't wanna spend time with specific relatives and you feel that you have to, it's important to protect yourself energetically, it's important to arm yourself spiritually, it's important to pay attention to how you're feeling because this is a very feeling full moon and anything that's been underneath the surface is going to come up under this time period. And look at it in the way of perhaps it's supposed to. Perhaps this is fated for you and that this is the way it needs to go. So if you do end up in a situation and you get into a heated confrontation with somebody in your reality and it blows up into a fight and then you're no longer, you know, the relationship goes out the window, then maybe that's what was supposed to happen, especially if it's been hanging on by a thread. So we have to look at this in many different ways because overall the energy of it is very supportive and productive but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's total smooth sailing for everybody. Again, I wanna bring it back to the Mercury-Mars conjunction, which kind of brings in a feeling of, I don't know, walking on eggshells to an extent, being very, being very careful about what it is that you're saying, overly mindful. I don't think that's a bad thing at this time. So again, it has the potential to be very, very healing when it comes to our relationships, when it comes to speaking what's on our heart, speaking our truth. But that's if that truth is erring more on the side of positive emotion and expression. If you have to apologize to somebody under these energies, that could go very well. But if you have something that you need to clear the air about with somebody, that could take a different turn. So it's all about the delivery and it's all about the intention. So as always, it's important to go inward and check in with your soul to see where you are at and what are your motives, motivations for what it is that you're doing, being conscious, being present every step of the way, remembering that our presence is often the present in somebody else's life and vice versa. And honoring that for what it is. Looking for the good while not ignoring the toxic, okay? Very important. The tarot card that I pulled for this full moon is actually the moon. And the moon illuminates the shadows. The full moon illuminates the shadows. What's been lurking underneath the surface, the soul, the psyche. What's been unconscious is now coming up to the conscious, to conscious awareness. Again, we're dealing with these Neptune aspects, we're also dealing with a Mercury retrograde. So you are likely going to receive clarity about something in your life that you might or might not want, but trust that it is going to help you to move forward more clearly and more authentically. And don't be afraid, speaking of hiding, don't be afraid to express what's in your heart, especially when it comes to bridging a gap or becoming more connected. Okay, so that is this full moon. And then we close out the month, December 30th, also the year, Jupiter will station direct at eight degrees of Taurus. Actually, it's um, five degrees, not eight degrees. Jupiter has been retrograde since September. Jupiter spends about four months per year retrograde the last four months of the year. So this is not an energy that we are not used to. And the thing with Jupiter is because Jupiter is very expansive and brings in a lot of opportunity and a lot of growth, when Jupiter's retrograde, it is a time of spiritual and philosophical introspection. And we still can receive opportunities while Jupiter is retrograde, but it's not the same as when Jupiter is direct. So if you feel, especially if you have strong Taurus energy, because Jupiter's been traveling through Taurus since May. So if you've been feeling like you've been slowed down the last three or four months while Jupiter's been retrograde, just know that if you have been doing your soul work, if you have been taking the time to reflect, especially when it comes to your spiritual and your philosophical beliefs, you know, expansion of your mind, of your higher minds, doing your work, 
and especially looking at the bigger picture, which is what Jupiter represents, then now that Jupiter stations direct, things should just start to move forward again. Opportunities will start to open back up. You may not really notice a difference. Again, if you have strong Taurus in your birth chart, you'll really enjoy this energy picking back up. And for all of us, check your chart where Taurus falls because that is where Jupiter will be transiting and that will be where Jupiter stations direct. And you can see an increase in opportunity in those areas of your life. So I hope that this was helpful. I also want to mention that early January, I have not settled on the date yet. So make sure you sign up for my newsletter so that you receive it. But um, early January, I'm going to be doing my forecast, my 2024 forecast live. Last year I did it recorded. I've decided this year I want to do it live. It'll give me the opportunity to give more information and to interact with all of you. And I will be recording it for those that can't join live and you will receive the recording. Now I'm doing it a little bit different this year. I am going to do it in quarters. So I'm going to only do January through April 1st. Reason being, I think it is more beneficial. Actually, I feel and I know that it is more beneficial to do it in smaller digestible chunks. It will give you the overall themes for 2024, but I'm going to stick with January through April. I'm also going to go through the signs. So it's gonna be extremely informative. So again, be sure to sign up for my newsletter so that you are notified of the date of that and you can sign up. 2024 is set to be a powerful year of growth, opportunity, and abundance, but there's always a but. We have to take the steps. We have to do the work. Jupiter, the planet, is the king of the gods. And Joseph Campbell, who is an American author, I always go back to this quote. He says, take 10 steps towards the gods and they will then take 10 towards you. I always equate that quote with Jupiter because Jupiter is the planet of benevolence, abundance, blessings, growth and expansion, but we also have to take the steps. We have to be very conscious of what it is that we desire and what we're doing to work toward that. Not that we're just expecting it to land in our lap. Hey, sometimes it does and that's amazing. 99% of the time, we have to take those steps. It's like when you set up a manifestation ritual. Manifestation is intention. So yeah, you can put it out there all you want, what you want, but you have to be very intentional about your intentions. You have to take the steps. You have to create the space to move forward toward what it is that you desire. And then again, as you take that one step toward the gods, that one heroic step toward the gods, it will then take 10 toward you. And it may not come in the way that you envision. It may not come in exactly how you want it, but it will come in how you need it. Keep that in mind. I hope that this was helpful. Again, you can find me everywhere by looking at the description box. I wish you all a wonderful holiday season. I am looking forward to 2024 and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.